I once asked an economics professor to contribute an article to Simple Money magazine, which, by the way, if you don't subscribe to either of my magazines, Simplify or Simple Money, I highly recommend them. I'll put a link in the description below. But my instructions to the professor were vague on purpose. Assume, I wrote, you had the opportunity to teach just one economic principle to every person on the planet. What is the one lesson you think is most important for everybody to know? I didn't know what he would choose to write about, but to be honest, I was really intrigued to see which principle he would choose. Do you want to guess what economic lesson he decided to teach? Don't overspend your income, save a little bit every month, learn about compound interest, how to create a budget. Nope, none of those. The Arizona State economics professor wrote about the economic principle of opportunity cost. If you don't know, the technical definition of opportunity cost is the foregone benefit that would have been derived from an option other than the one that was chosen. In other words, with every purchase we make, there are sacrifices we assume, alternatives that we must forego. Every dollar spent on an item is one less dollar that could have been spent on something else. I ended up loving his decision to highlight opportunity cost as the one economic principle that he most wanted everyone to know. It is a concept that is an important principle for life, especially in an age where consumerism and choice too often cloud judgment. Of course, it is also a principle that carries weight beyond dollars, because sometimes the purchases we make require us to forego alternatives that are bigger than dollars and cents. Take the example of choosing whether to buy a new car or not. On one hand, we can see the opportunity cost very plainly. If I choose to use my money to buy a new car, that means I have less money left over for a vacation or new furniture or new clothes. But if I have those things already, then the opportunity cost seems slim. Not to mention there are advertisements all day long on television encouraging me to buy the new car. It will be adventurous, it will be flashy, it will draw attention, it will bring luxury into my life, it might even spark new and amazing outings with my family. The decision quickly becomes an irresistible one. I want the new car and I'm willing to part with the dollars. The opportunity cost is worth it, I convince myself. But what if the purchase of that car brings more than a new set of wheels into my driveway. After all, unless I'm paying the full price in cash, it will also bring a monthly car payment. And debt, especially for a depreciating asset like a new car, becomes a constant burden. The immediate gratification of driving a new car off the lot is quickly overshadowed by the years and years of monthly payments, the interest, the insurance, the depreciation, and the stress of now needing to maintain something more costly and more valuable. In this scenario, the cost of the vehicle wasn't just the sticker price or in terms of the car loan. It also cost me a measure of peace. The opportunity cost was more than just what items the dollars could have been spent on economically, the opportunity cost also included my well-being. And as the old saying goes, anything that costs you your peace is too expensive. In this scenario, I had to give up something potentially more valuable than dollars. I had to give up calm, peace, financial freedom, and the satisfied feelings of knowing the car I drove was fully paid for. Now, this isn't to say that there is never a time when a vehicle needs to be replaced. It's just to say that given the options, 
it's often better to drive an old car with peace of mind than a new car burdened by stress and debt. And of course, the application of this idea extends far beyond vehicles. We see it all around us. Almost every day, we're presented with opportunities to spend our money on more and newer things. And while not every purchase may require a loan, like a new car or even a used car, the cumulative effects of those financial decisions do begin to play a significant role in our lives. Consider just a few examples. Smartphones. Every year, new models tempt us with slightly better cameras, marginally faster processors, or just a cool new color or design that everyone seems to want. Most people do choose to make a monthly payment on those devices. But even if you don't, is buying a new phone really worth the price every year or even every couple years? Especially if there are other debts that you are currently repaying? Wouldn't it be better to use an old phone and get out of debt than buy a new one? Our homes, the average American home, has tripled in size in the last 50 years and they continue to get bigger and bigger and we continue to buy them despite homes becoming less and less affordable. But just because the bank pre-approves you for a mortgage loan doesn't mean you need to spend the entire amount on your purchase. It's important to also ask, what amount of my peace and life am I sacrificing just to live in a bigger house? Wouldn't it be better to live in a modest sized home and experience more freedom than buy a big one? Our entertainment choices. A financial advisor once told me, most people who are struggling financially do so because they've overspent in one of three ways. Too much house, too much car, or too much entertainment. And by entertainment, he meant the broadest definition. Restaurants, vacations, alcohol, shows, sports, events. Restaurants and trips and shows are certainly enjoyable and there is no shortage of them available to us. But if the opportunity cost is getting ahead financially, is it really worth the expense? Wouldn't it be better to find simpler forms of entertainment and no longer stress about money than spending money every weekend on entertainment. We live in a society that often confuses success with material acquisition. And in that world, fancy cars, big houses, and the latest gadgets are always worth the price. After all, that's where the good life is being lived. At least that's what they would have us believe. But deep down, we know better than that. And we want something different. We want to live responsible lives, not in debt, but within our means. And to accomplish that, we must actively work against the temptations to accumulate that surround us every day. And one way we do that is to count the opportunity cost of every purchase, not just in terms of dollars that could be spent elsewhere, although that is a concern, but also in the peace and the freedom that we sacrifice in every purchase. I don't know about you, but I'd rather live in peace with less than stressed out with much.